joy to be here this morning. As they said, my name is Roran Banda from Rwanda, and it rhymes very well, so if you want to say it next time. I was hoping that we will get into that African way, a little bit deeper, so maybe next time that we can all join you and do that. My brothers and sisters, GAFCON is not new to me. I've been connected with GAFCON since 2008, if not a little bit before. This is a movement that is transforming the world through the proclamation of Christ. And proclaiming Christ faithfully, we will do and we must do and proclaim him to the nations. There is no other choice. There is no other option. We must. And we should. I love the little song that children often used to sing or still sing that says he got the whole world in his hand. He is the creator of the world and the world is his. In Psalm 24 verse 1, it is clearly stated that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it are his. So you and I are the Lord's. In Psalm 50 verse 9 to 12, it says, I have no need of a bull from your store or of goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine. And a cattle on a thousand years. I think he had been in Rwanda where there is a thousand years. <laughs> and the Rwandans love their cows. All that is the Lord's. And we are also his. Unfortunately, the world is lost because of sin. The world represents sin for humanity and their under God's condemnation. As we all know from the scripture, sin began with a certain rebellion against God. And sin began in the world by Adam and Eve, as we read in Genesis. It is in Romans 5, 12, where it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, uh, by sin and so death passes upon man, for that all have seen. In this world we live in, as you all know, the devil is clever. And he tries to use those that uh, seem to be his and on his size to manipulate to shoot small arrows and big arrows to those who believe and to those who are ready to take the gospel to the world. But thank God, God knew that it would be difficult. God knew that there would be challenges. And as a result, he promised to be with us all the way for those who believe him and who are ready to proclaim the gospel. We thank him for that. I have had two big temptations in my life. There have been many, but I can, there are two that I can recall. When I was a student in college some time back, 
I was very poor, a poor student. I could hardly find any shillings to buy postage to send the letter home. I was studying in Kenya, that's why I use shillings. And a person that I called a friend of mine, one time, I think he waited for the time that I was very, very, very hungry. And he approached me and he had this bread that had turned, uh, turned greenish. And he wanted to send me somewhere to get something for him. And he said, I think this bread, if you polish it and take this greenish thing off, you can eat it. At that time, my friends, I lost it. And I won't tell you what I did, but he suffered for it. <laughs> and I want to go into details. Later on, we became friends. And he was not trying to tempt me anymore with a little bread that he would taste in front of my eyes. And I thank God that we reconciled. More recently, I had an interesting temptation. I was traveling and trying to raise funds. And somebody offered me a $10,000 check. You know what it is when you are trying to try to raise funds and somebody offers you a check of that size. It is a huge temptation. But in my life, I refuse to be manipulated. In my life, I refuse to lose my dignity of who I am in Christ for what people can pay to buy me. And my brothers, fellow Africans, as we try to do this difficult work, it is very easy for people to tempt us and to show the green in front of us, hoping that you will go for the green and forget who you are in Christ. There shouldn't be any compromise whatsoever. For the proclamation of the gospel, we need to stand strong. We need to be committed. But this world that has been lost in sin will have people that will come from different sides that will come with different things. Way back, I watched during the Panama time, I think it was Noriega, and there was the Americans who were playing a little psychological war on him. And they were playing music around him. And attempting, even though time came and uh, there was an action. It is very easy for people to play a psychological war on us whether it is through messages that they send, whether it is through cheap arrows that they shoot, whether it is that threatening of taking our buildings away, I challenge you, brothers and sisters, those in North America and other places, to stand strong. The church needs you. The world needs you. This world that has been lost in sin, God loves it. God loves this world. It is why in John 3.16, John declares that God for so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but they have eternal life. This is God's commitment to save us. This is God's commitment for our salvation, a salvation which is a gift received through believing God for it. Because God so loved the world, he gave. He gave God's love is the reason 
for giving you and I a new life through Jesus Christ that we are to proclaim faithfully to the nations. And this word nations, if you look into the Greek word, it talks about ethnos or ethnicity, if I can use that word, which will mean that we need to go into our groups, our society, our ethnic groups, our customs, and bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Folks, it is easy to share what you have experienced. Better yet, the life you live in Christ, let that zeal, that desire, that commitment to proclaim Christ faithfully to the nations be in Maradi contagious or a contagious sickness through the world that needs him so much in our own communities, societies, and cultures. Therefore, brothers and sisters, nothing should stop in our way, but we should move faithfully. We should be united for the gospel. We should be in fellowship for the gospel. For God has shown us the way to love and to serve. And to serve him, we should do. It is my prayer and my encouragement to all of us that regardless of how difficult it may be, that we will hold on our dignity, on our identity in him with the desire to go to the most difficult places in our societies, on our continents, in our countries to proclaim him and proclaim him faithfully. As I come to this conclusion of this particular section, because I will be coming back later, it is a joy to see what has happened since the movement GAFCON started. But let me tell you that we have a challenge, the challenge of standing together the challenge of not compromising, the challenge of not setting our identity. I love the country of Rwanda, and forgive me, but I also love our president. Some time back, there was an embargo on the country of Rwanda, where they were saying that they needed to freeze all the monies that were given to the country. And I got that inspiration in me. He said, our president said, with the little money that we are giving that streams like IV coming into us, can we say who we are? Can we say our identity? And the people of Rwanda said no. The little money that was coming from the countries that were trying to help the country, within a short time, in a time of six months, I believe, Rwanda started what they called the Dignity Fund. And that fund raised more money than those countries were giving us within six months. And I know sometimes that we are tempted with that money that comes from those places that makes us sometimes sell our soul. There is no way we should be afraid of saying, keep your money, of saying, keep your buildings, of saying, keep what you have. We have Jesus and we'll proclaim him faithfully in our nations. May God bless you as my brother comes on.